In this video, I want to talk about the covariance and the correlation between two random variables. Okay, so let's think about a particular example. Let's think about if we had two random variables, x and y, and if we plot a few realizations of these two random variables. So perhaps we get some sort of realizations which looks something like this. So the way I've drawn it, I've tried to indicate that there, there is some sort of positive relationship between x and y. By positive, I mean that as x increases, y tends to increase as well. And we would like a way mathematically to sort of represent this relationship. Okay, we're going to come back to that. Let's also think about the case whereby if I had a sort of negative relationship between x and y. So that's, if I was to plot a few points, it would look something like this. Yeah, so as x increases, y tends to decrease. Again, we'd like a way mathematically of showing this particular relationship. And the way we do it mathematically is we define something which we call the covariance between random variable x and random variable y. And that's defined as being equal to the expectation of x minus mu x, where mu x is the mean of x, of uh, times, sorry, y minus mu y. And let's think about the intuition behind this particular formula. So let's think about in the sort of first case where we've got a positive relationship, let's assume that x is greater than its mean. If x is greater than its mean, then we know that this first parenthesis here is going to be positive. And because there is this positive relationship between y and x, if x is greater than its mean, y also tends to be greater than its mean. So overall, this is going to be sort of positive. And let's think about if x was actually less than its mean, then the first parenthesis here would be negative. But because y tends to go in the same direction as x, y would also tend to be lower than its mean. So this would be negative as well. So when I multiply these two things together, two negative numbers produces a positive number. So the covariance between x and y, when there is a positive relationship between x and y, will be positive. Let's think about now for the sort of bottom case whereby there is some sort of negative relationship between x and y. If x is now greater than its mean, so the first parenthesis is positive, y is likely below its mean. So the second parenthesis is likely going to be negative. So overall, we're going to get a sort of negative value for the covariance. And now let's think about if x was less than its mean. If that occurs, then uh, this first parenthesis is going to be negative, and y is likely going to be greater than its mean, so the second parenthesis is going to be positive, so we get a negative overall. So the covariance is a sort of measure that if it's positive, then there is a sort of positive relationship between x and y, namely if x increases, y tends to increase. And if there is a negative covariance between x and y, then the sort of opposite occurs. So as x increases, y tends to decrease. But notice that this thing is actually going to have units because if x has units and if y has units, then the covariance itself is going to sort of have the units of whatever is in the first parenthesis times the units of whatever is in the second parenthesis. So in itself, it doesn't tell us that much because it could take on a value of one or it could take on a value of, uh, let's say, minus uh, a million. But if we were sort of comparing two sort of pairs of random variables, then we wouldn't be able to say that the second pair of random variables was necessarily, you know, a million times more negatively correlated than the first set are positively correlated because the units of those two measures would be different. So what we actually like to do is we like to sort of normalize this thing and sort of make it unitless. And the way in which we make it unitless is by taking something which we call the correlation between x and y. So what this is defined as is defined as the covariance between x and y divided by the square root of the sort of variance of x times the variance of y. And just sort of taking a look at this particular measure here, the top and the bottom are both going to have the same units because the sort of units here are sort of, this is going to be sort of x squared if we sort of think about the stuff inside the square root, and that's going to be sort of y squared. But then when we take the square root, it's just going to be x times y, which is the same sort of units as the top. Furthermore, we know that the covariance of x and y 
can never exceed the sort of uh, variance of x times the variance of y, um, because that, that's the, poss the greatest possible way in which x and y could co-vary. So because of that, this sort of co uh, correlation, which we sometimes refer to as rho, we know that the correlation has to actually be centered around, or it has to lie between two particular values. Actually, let me just draw that again. Um, the, co the correlation has to be between minus one and plus one. It's plus one if they're perfectly positively correlated. So that's the circumstance whereby all my sort of points lie on a line. And it's minus one if they're perfectly negatively correlated. So that's if all points lie on a line which sort of has a negative slope. And it's zero if there's absolutely no association between x and y, because the covariance between x and y in that circumstance is also going to be zero.